So we are set free so we can obey? That sounds weird. My name is Chad Moore. I'm the Minister of Students and Family Ministries, and this is Beyond the Notes. So as we were walking through Genesis on Sunday, and we were in Genesis chapter 21, seeing the culmination of these promises that were repeated throughout the the life of, of Abraham, finally leading to the birth of Isaac. We see God's faithfulness displayed. We see that he does exactly as he says he was going to do over and, and over throughout their lives. But foremost, maybe even in this scenario of the birth of Isaac, we see the response from Abraham and Sarah, and the, specifically the response from Abraham was of his obedience. We didn't get any insight into what he was thinking or what he was feeling. All we are given is his obedience. He did as he was told. He circumcised Isaac. He named him Isaac. And we discussed about how whether it be a specific moment in our lives of, of God's faithfulness being displayed or just a reminder of God, who he is and his faithfulness in our lives should lead to obedience in our lives. And one of the passages that I uh, referred to briefly in, in the message was from Galatians 5. And Paul is speaking here of the freedom we have in Christ, that we've actually been set free set free from the law, the power of the law. And Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. And then the next verse is the one that I reference. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You see, it was strange to the uh, to the Jews in that day that there was this group of people made up of Jews and Gentiles that are not walking in line with the laws of the Old Testament as they had previously or as had been prescribed and, and the, the Jews were living out and the Judaizers were trying to, to establish a new within the church. And Paul's discussing how we have freedom from that law, but that that freedom from that law is not meant for us to be pursuing sin. It's not that we no longer have any um, impact from sin in our lives or any um, need to consider sin because we've been forgiven of our sins. No, in our freedom, we need to pursue Christ. And if we truly are free in Christ, we will pursue Christ. But Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And Paul describes that here as walking by the spirit will lead to the lack of of a gratification for the desires of the flesh. That the desires of the flesh are actually against the spirit. The desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. That's verse 17. And in verse 18, he says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. That there's actually um, two options there and they are mutually exclusive. You're either under the law held to the law, judged by the law, and that will lead to you having to pay for your sins, paying that punishment that we all deserve. Or you are led by the Spirit. You are indwelt by the Holy Spirit through repenting and trusting in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And that we as Christians moving forward in our lives, the way that we are obedient to him, the way that we do glorify him in our lives is by walking in step with the spirit. It's not by still looking back to that law and looking at the lists of laws that we are um, that are clarified for us for what sin is and what sin is not. It is not that we are supposed to have a punch list of things that we do and don't do every single day. We are supposed to walk in step with the spirit. And that, through walking in step with the Spirit and abiding in God, pursuing God day after day after day, it will actually lead to obedience. That we will be more obedient. We will actually be fulfilling or um, not infringing on the law in the same way that we were because we're pursuing God. 
And he describes what that looks like in the fruit of the Spirit in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That fruit of the Spirit, the same thing corresponds to that as it does avoiding sins. We don't pursue the fruit by name and just choose to to be more patient, choose to be more joyous or peaceful. The way that we truly see that in our lives is by nurturing the tree itself, that we abide in the Lord and pursue the Lord. And as a result, the Holy Spirit works in our lives to produce this fruit and not just one of them, fruit as a whole. It's the fruit there is, is listed singularly, that this is a makeup of what our lives should look like over time as we pursue God and walk in the Spirit. And lest we should get too, too haughty about that, there's, one, there's two more verses here in this section. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. You see, we should never let that lead us to a place in which we are overcome by comparisons with one another. That we become, we get to a place where we're thinking too much of ourselves, too highly of ourselves. That earlier in that section, he's talking about the fact that we need to use that opportunity to love and serve one another. And at the beginning of chapter six, he discusses how we need to restore gently those who have gotten caught up in transgressions and sins. That as we walk in the spirit, as we pursue God and focus on him and not on ourselves, it does not result in legalism. It does not result in license or liberalism in our lives. It results in following in between those two, following in step with the spirit. As we keep our eyes on Christ, not on our own feet, but on him. And as we see our brothers and sisters around us stumbling, as we see them getting caught up in themselves, as we see them getting caught up in their own sins and sinfulness and and, and transgressions and, and desires of the flesh, that we don't look at them as we pass them by and think, why, glad I'm not them. I'm so much better than they are. No, we, we, we reach out, we pray for them, and we try within the best of our ability to restore them with gentleness to the way of Christ, keeping watch on ourselves that we will not be tempted. Are we focused on ourselves or Christ this week? My prayer is and continues to be that we focus on Christ this week, that it leads to obedience. And the other aspect that I didn't talk about just now is awe of God. I pray that your life is full of of obedience and awe this week, not because you chose to be obedient and chose to be filled with awe, but because you have been focused on Jesus and you cannot help but be obedient and filled with awe. If this is a message you'd like for someone else to hear, you're, um, you're welcome to, to like it and share it. Um, but we hope that you join us again next week as we continue through our series of Gen- Genesis on Beyond the Notes. <laughs>